Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome our next Billy T nominee for you. He's all the way from Wellington, the capital. Please welcome Mr. Steve Wrigley. <laughs> I, uh, I was so confident before I came out here and then when I looked at myself backstage I kind of realised I sort of looked like Axl Rose made love to a psychedelic Teletubby, so... But uh, oh, I'm so glad to be back here in New Zealand. I spent most of last year travelling around. I spent some time in a little place called Amsterdam. How many people have been there before? Make some noise. Yeah, man, it's a hell of a town. It's a party. The only thing about Amsterdam that I found really difficult to deal with is there are a lot of Germans around. Uh, I don't really trust Germans myself. It's, not, it's something about the way they talk. There's something in the German accent that I just found inherently very evil, you know? Like if a German, I'm, I'll, if a German comes up to me on the street and says, excuse me, they sound like a freaking supervillain, right? Like if he goes, excuse me, do you have the time? Like, like I'm worried if I go, yeah, it's 12.45, he's gonna go, oh, you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Dutch though, I had a great time when I was over there, uh, I didn't, I mean there were very few Dutch people around, me and my friends, I went there with 10 of my mates and we forgot to book accommodation for ourselves, which was a really bad idea because I ended up, right, I ended up staying in uh, a hostel with, it was a co-ed hostel and I ended up staying in a hostel with seven of these tiny little Swedish girls, right, which I know sounds really cool to some of the guys out there but I'm a big dude who makes a lot of delicate noises in his sleep, right? <laughs> so I, I went out onto the street, I met back up with my friends, we're all staying in different places. I said, guys, I'm staying in this hostel with these seven girls and it's really intense, I, don't, I might have to crash at one of your guys' places. They said, don't worry. We all split off into groups, we all had different things we wanted to do. Me and one of my friends, who, as you can probably tell by the way I dress, really enjoy smoking drugs, right? <laughs> uh, we were like, all right, we're gonna go to one of the cafes, we're gonna check that out. And in all my years of smoking pot, I never knew, and I didn't discover till I went to Amsterdam, I never knew that you could bake it into cakes and you could eat it. That's incredible, because eating and smoking drugs are two of my favourite things. <laughs> so I said to the girl behind the counter, I was like, I've got to do this. So I said, can I get a cake for me and a cake for my friend? And she said, sure, your cans, there you go. And I was like, fuck, she thinks she's a German. I was like, <laughs> you know. But I, I sat down, I ate mine, my friend ate his. But I'm very impatient, right? And I also, I didn't know that it takes a while to kick in if you eat it. And after five minutes, I said, dude, this isn't working. I'm going to go get another one. It was a really bad idea because I went up to the counter and I said to the girl behind the counter, uh, yeah, can I just get another cake, thanks. It's not, hasn't done anything. I think it's because I'm a big guy. And she goes, are you sure you want one more? Uh, what she was saying, obviously, was are you sure you want one more? It takes a while to kick in. But unfortunately for me, I thought she was saying, are you sure you just want one more? Challenge. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh... So I had three, uh... <laughs> Three for me, three for my friend, right? We chopped them down. And still after five minutes, nothing had happened. So I looked at my friend, I said, this isn't working at all, man. This is BS, let's smoke a joint. Uh, it was a really bad idea, because after 10 minutes, it was like <laughs> I've never been that stoned in my life. I couldn't feel a thing. I was sitting there going, I can't, I can't feel my face. In fact, I'm not too sure if my body's there. I'd look down to check, but I can't feel my neck, so. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure my entire existence has been reduced to my left eye and my right nostril. I think that is it. That's all I am right now. I'm not even sure if I just did that bit with my hand or if I imagine. And then, what was, I was kind of enjoying that moment, but then, like all intense stoner experiences, paranoia went, Hello! I have a question for you! Uh, you know how he does that? I have a question for you! And it's like, okay, what is it? Do you think that you just thought all of those things quietly in your head? Have you ever had that when you're stoned and you can't remember whether you thought something or whether you said it? I was in the grips of it, right? And I was sitting there going, oh my God, man, did I think that'll say it? Hang on, that's a good question. Did I think it'll say it? 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 Am I thinking or saying this? Fuck, what's going on, right? And you know you get to this point in the middle of that paranoia where if you can only figure out whether you thought the thing or said the thing, everything will be fine again. And I was going, why can't I remember whether I thought it or said it? Why can't I remember that one simple fact? I should be able to access memory banks? Denied. Why is that not? I've got cancer, that's what it is. Yep. As soon as I smoked on that joint, that cancer just, just appeared right there. And the cancer in my brain is talking to the tape in my stomach that I know I've got. And I can't remember whether I thought something or 
said it! So I thought if I just look over at my friend, I'll be sweet. If I just, if I, I'll ask him, he'll know, which was a really dumb idea, because he was just as stoned as me. I said, hey man, um, did I say something to you before about being like a left eyeball and a right nostril? Or have I said nothing at all for what feels like the last six hours? And he just looked, as soon as the words came out of my mouth, all my stone friend did was go like this. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> thing he could be thinking is, did he just fucking ask me that? <laughs> or can I read his mind? <laughs> it was a bad thing, right? But we did, I mean, I know I got really paranoid that day, but we had a blast that night because me and my friends decided that what we needed to do was go check out one of those live sex shows that they have there. I don't know if you check these out, but these are amazing. This is people having sex in front of an audience, right? I have trouble having sex in front of the person I'm having it with. <laughs> this is incredible. So I said, yes, we've got to go check that out. It's me and 10 of my mates. We're all from Wellington, right? We're all Kiwi dudes. We all rock up, right? And it's a guy dressed as a priest making love to a woman dressed as a nun. Unfortunately for them, to John Bon Jovi's living on a prayer. <laughs> because the only thing that a group of Kiwi like more than watching some live sex action is a good old-fashioned bogan fucking sing-along, right? <laughs> and you can imagine how difficult it would be, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are privileged enough to have sex, imagine how hard it would be if there were ten Kiwi Muppets at the back of your bedroom going, whoa, we're halfway there, whoa! <laughs> Unfortunately, and my... <laughs> My one friend from Wellington who always gets slightly confused when he's drunk was just in the corner going, Hurricanes! <laughs> Hurricanes! <laughs> but I turned to my friend who I was standing next to, right? We were singing up a storm. I turned to my friend and I said, Could this get any better? He said, Yeah, man! Take one of these! <laughs> And it was the first time in my life that I'd taken ecstasy. Zuh. Because <laughs> I was still in that frame of mind, so I took three, right? Which is a really bad thing to do when you're in a club surrounded by other dudes, because all I wanted to do was touch the shit out of my hurricanes, mate, right? <laughs> And I was real confused and I really didn't want to be in that club anymore. I needed to go, I just needed to go somewhere and I needed to chill out. So I walked out onto the streets, I was on the streets of Amsterdam and I was just thinking to myself, man, I just need to go somewhere where I can calm down. Oh, I know, I'll just go back to the hostel where I'm staying. <laughs> Which was a really bad idea because I'd forgotten that the girls were there, right? My marijuana experience earlier in the day had wiped my memory. All I knew was that there was a bed and that was gonna be wicked, right? So I go back to the hostel, I come in the door, my bed is this bunk on the right. As soon as I slide my hand, right, there into the bed sheet, it's the most amazing feeling I've ever had in my life. I think, wow, imagine how that would feel over your entire naked body. <laughs> so I took off all my clothes, right? I forget these girls are even in the room because the, the Swedes, they sleep silent, right? <laughs> they do. They've had to practice. They also are close to the Germans, right? <laughs> So I'm lying in the bed, just grinding the hell out of it, just completely nude, going, oh, yes! Mm. Not touching myself, nothing dodgy, just the feeling on my back was amazing, right? When all of a sudden I feel this little tug at my foot, and I look down, and one of the girls is there, right? And this is what I think is so polite. I'm completely naked on the bed, being very inappropriate, right? But she still looks at me and goes, excuse me. But my friends and I are trying to sleep. <laughs> and you are making quite a lot of noise. <laughs> You're <Yodle. laughs> Right. But the only thing I could think to clear it up was to explain exactly what happened, and I just went, I'm on drugs! Woo! <laughs> They were really quiet. Uh, the only sound I could hear, which was from the room next door to us, after I went, I'm on drugs! I heard this voice go, Oh, really? <laughs> you shouldn't have told me that. 